couple weeks ago we talked about, uh, remember the thug and the cop? Mm -hmm. Let's go revisit that, that thug and the cop real quick. And you don't have to write this down, just pay attention for now. I'll tell you what to write down shortly. Um, so watch. Um, so remember the cop the thug started running away. I think, were you guys here when they did the, the thug? Yeah, okay, the new yes, students, right. I think that was the first thing you showed them. Four feet per second. Grabbed the goalie's purse, ran at a speed of four feet per second. Okay. Don't write anything down right now, just pay attention. So, four feet per second. Okay. So I'm going to go, let's see, 1, 8, uh, 12, 16, uh, 32, uh, 36, 40, 58, 52. So I'm going to go by 4s here. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 4, 28, 32. 36, 40. Okay, so, and I'm going to go by ones on the seconds. One, two, three, and so on. So right now I'm just going to talk about the, the thug. I'm going to graph the thug, the function of the thug right now. Okay, watch. Erase all my scratches here and all that. Okay, so, uh, four feet per second, the thug ran after he stole that old lady's purse, that piece of garbage. Um, so after one second, he's four feet away from the crime scene. Two seconds, eight feet, okay, so on. 16 feet, so on. Look, at, here's a thug running. So far, so good. Okay. The cop, on the other hand, is running at a rate of five feet per second, right? Um, so let's see, five, so here's, and then he, he starts running after a four second delay, if you remember. Okay, so after a four second delay, the cop starts running um, and chasing the, the, the thug. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, let me just use a graphing calculator instead. It's going to be a little more accurate. So, um, let me go to Desmos. So again, right, you're not writing anything down yet. Just watch me. So here's a Desmos graphing calculator. And let's make this Braille mode, reverse contrast. Nah, that's good. All right, so check it out. Let me type in the function that represents the thug. I'll put T of X, T for thug, X is every second he runs equals 4X. Okay, there's a thug. Okay. Now let me do the cop. The cop, since he's a cop, I'm going to name the function C for cop. C of x equals 5 times the seconds he ran was x minus 4 because it was a 4 second delay. He had to finish that donut. <laughs> and then he started running after the thug. Oh, it's perfect too. The cop's in blue. Nice. So watch this. When is that cop going to catch up with that thug? Look at he's getting closer. The more time runs, look at I'm already at six seconds, eight seconds down here, and we're at 24 feet away. 
sooner or later that cop is going to run the same amount of feet as a thug and that's exactly the point when he grabs the thug and puts handcuffs on that thug so let's watch this it's right there coming up boom So someone help me. What does that ordered pair mean here? Right here. Can someone tell me what that ordered pair means? Look at it. The cops function and the, and the thugs function intersect. Got a 20 seconds. What? One more time? Right. So remember X means seconds. That's 10 seconds and 80 feet. Right. They'll both have ran, look at the thug and the cop will both have ran 80 feet. Cause look at, they're both at 80 feet right here. Both lines are at 80 feet and they intersect at 80 feet. So at 80 feet from the crime scene, that cat, the, the cop catches up with the thug. So far so good. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why does the function keep going? There's something wrong with this function the way I wrote it. The coordinate of this function, the, the, look at it, looks like the cop is still running. The line still keeps going. And the red line keeps going. So that's really not that accurate. They stop running at 80 feet. So I should make that function stop at 80. How do you do that? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell the calculator to say, look, the X's, the, the number of seconds, stop at 20. Look, okay, because it was at the 20th second. Both the cop and the thug stopped running. So I'm going to tell the calculator, look, the function is T of X equals 4X, but X is not going to go past 20 seconds. The seconds are not going to go past, past 20. Look how I'm going to write it, watch. This is actually what we're getting into now. Watch. Where's that bracket, bracket, bracket? Where are you? Here you are. X is less than, watch this now. Less than or equal to 20. Let me close the bracket. Look at the cop now. Let me zoom in on the cop. It stops at 20. Right there. The, the red line stops at 20. I'm going to do the same thing for the... Actually, that was a thug. The thug is red. I'm going to do the same thing for the cop. I'm telling the, the computer, hey, look at the function I just entered. Make sure the X's don't go past. Watch this now. All the X's, which represent seconds, are going to be less than or equal to 20 seconds. And now look at the function stops there at the 20th second. Mm. But wait a minute, let me go down over here. Wait a second, look at this. The thug wasn't running before the th he he wasn't running before he grabbed the purse. He grabbed the purse right here and started running. So there was no such thing as negative seconds for the thug. So I'm going to get rid of this part of the function too. Uh, I'm going to say, look at the seconds only start after they're greater than or equal to, watch this now, look at this, zero. That thug only starts running right here. He wasn't running before that. So he, he starts running and ends running at 20 seconds. There's a beginning and an end to the function. Same with the cop. The cop was eating a donut. So I'm gonna put, the, the seconds have to be bigger than zero, but less than 20. Now we're talking. Actually, you know what? My bad, on. remember that's the, the four second delay? So I'm gonna put greater or equal to four seconds, because he starts at the fourth second. There you go. Now the functions are accurate. Now the functions really describe what happened. 
notice. Because what I did is I tweaked. Don't laugh at that word. High schoolers get all excited when I say tweak. I tweak and adjusted the x values, uh, Rocha. I said, look, here's a function, but the x's don't kick in, don't start until after zero and before 20 seconds. That's the only time the function even exists. It's when the thug began to run and when he stopped running because the cop caught up with him. That's when the phenomena started and when the phenomena end, ended. So I was precise with when the phenomena started. It was more than zero seconds. Okay, at zero seconds, and then it stopped at 20. That's what we're gonna work on today. So the first thing on top of your notes, that note page, you're gonna fit it right on top of the, even the, you're gonna fit two vocabulary words even on top of the, the title there. And the two vocabulary words are this. Domain and range. There we go. So you're going to define these two simple words all the way on top, above the title of that note page. Domain is a set of all possible input values, which is the x values. And the range is a set of all possible output values, which is really the y values, the y-axis. You may have seen these words before. Do they ring a bell a little bit, Diaz? Yeah. How about you, Gomez? Rocha, domain range? OK. You write this on top? Rodriguez, do you remember these words? Maybe from a past class, domain and range? How about you, Dominguez? I'm hoping that my thug and cop example showed you why range is important. I defined and I set limits on all the possible x values which were the seconds they were running. Just those two words, I'm right on top, above the, the title itself. Right yeah, just the domain, underline that. That's a definition and range, just those two words. It has the right It does? It has domain and range. That's no. the title. Yeah, no. you're right, you're right. There's no overlay on the bottom. You're writing the definition of the I don't know. I don't see anything. Oh, I'm going to fill that in, but that's not the definition. That's just how to, how to find it. I get what you're saying, Rocha. So far, so good. All right, so if you want to find the domain, you're going to fill this in now with me. If you want to find the domain, scan your pencil or your pen. Left and right, left to right along the x-axis. So if you want to look for your domain, you scan your pen or pencil from left to right along the x-axis. No phones out, Rocha, come on now. For range though, you want to find the range, that's a set of all your y values, obviously what you're going to do is scan your pencil from top to bottom, actually from bottom to top. along the y-axis. So look at the first example. Let's fill it. We're going to do it together here. So look at this function. It goes infinitely this, in, this direction because the arrows sit mean that it goes forever that way, and it goes forever that way. So this function doesn't have a beginning or an end with the x-axis. If I, if I scan my pencil from left to right, look, at, I'm right here on my pencil from left. Wherever I, I, I put my, my pencil or pen on the x-axis, there's going to be a function value. Look at all these values. No matter where I go, there's function values. 
there's function values forever this way. Function values forever that way. So no matter where I am on the x-axis, there's going to be some function value. So the domain then, the possible x values for the domain, is all real numbers. Just put all real numbers. It goes infinitely to the positive direction, infinitely to the negative direction. All real numbers. Now, from now on when it's all real numbers, we're going to use a symbol, like a double bar that looks like an R. So we don't have to write out all real numbers from now on, just put the double bar with an R. What about the range though? So let me scan, I'm going to use green now. The y-axis from bottom to top, the y-axis from bottom to top, right here. I, I notice there's no, there's no y values below negative 2. Notice the smallest y value is negative 2 right there. So I'm going from bottom to top. The function doesn't kick in until right there. So there's nothing below negative 2 for the y values. It starts here and then it goes up, both directions. So every y value here, look on the y-axis, will, will have some type of value on this function. It just doesn't go below negative 2. So look what I'm going to do. Look how I'm going to describe the, the range. y has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. So remember that greater than is whatever the Pac-Man wants to eat is whatever is greater. So this value for the y is negative 2 and everything just goes up from there. It doesn't go below negative 2. That's why I put y has to be bigger than or equal to negative 2. Question so far? So from here, here on out, I'm gonna do, we're going to do two more. For the domain, I'm going to put it in blue, and for the range, I'm going to put it in green. All right, domain. Let me scan my pencil from left to right. All right, here we go. From left to right on the domain, the function doesn't kick in until right here. It's a circle. And it ends right here. Notice. The function only kicks in from negative 3 to positive 3. And everything in, everything in the circle is between the negative 3 and the positive 3 if I look at all the x values. There's nothing, there's nothing lower than a negative 3 right there and nothing greater than a positive 3 right there. So I'm going to describe x like that. Look at x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3, but less than or equal to positive 3. It's two things at one time. There's a beginning to the function, that's where the circle starts, and there's an end to where the circle ends. That's kind of like the thug and the cop. The cop started running, ended running. So there was a window of x possible x values. All right? Think of my, look at the way I said it. The thug had to be bigger than zero seconds, because that's when he stole the old lady's purse. But he had to be less than 20 seconds or equal to 20 seconds because that's when the cop ca caught up with him. The cop, on the other hand, started running at the fourth second, so X has to be bigger than four seconds and less than 20 because that's when he caught up to the thug. So I set the domain here when I graphed them on that calculator. Back at the ranch. How about the range? Maybe want to take a stab? Good. So I'm going from bottom to top now for the, the, the range. So here we go. Here's y. Here we go. The function kicks in there, and it's at, at, it's at its highest point right there. So one more time. Y is what? Go ahead. Less than 3 or more than negative 3. Less than or equal to 3, but more than or equal to negative 3. Very nice. So we're describing all the possible x values and all the possible y values. That's all we're doing. Nothing more, nothing less. There's nothing. I mean, 
Not rocket science here. One more. I'll let you do your flip grid. Any questions? Say again? Uh, right there. Y has greater than or equal to negative 3, but less than or equal to positive 3. Let me come right back to this. Copy this here. I got you. I got you. Do two more. Let's do three and four together. All right. Somebody says Gomez. What's a domain here on number three? We scan the pencil from left to right. Scanning the pencil from left to right. This arrow goes forever. This arrow goes forever here. All real numbers. numbers. The domain is all real numbers. Every single number on the number line at X can be. How about the range? So let's see. Wherever I'm on the Y axis, there's there's a value. This goes on forever. So no matter how low I go on the y-axis, there's going to be some value, because it goes forever that way. And if I go up on the y-axis, there's going to be some value over here. So what do you think? It's going forever up, and it's going forever down. It's a line. So what would the y, the, the, what would the range be? All real numbers, too. It's going forever. Rocking and rolling. Last one. This is getting fatter and fatter here. Notice. But the arrows always indicate forever. Okay? So if I'm looking for my domain, no matter how far I go over here on the left, on the x-axis, there's going to be some value on the, on the function. No matter how far I go on the x-axis to greater, like to positive, there's going to be some value to the function also. So there, x is also all real numbers. The domain is all real numbers. Because that function keeps getting wider and wider and wider, there's going to be some x value that's defined on the function. So it's all real numbers. But the range, though, isn't all real numbers here. It maxes out. So I'm looking, I'm going from bottom to top, looking from here, look at the functions defined here on the y-axis. So I'm going up, the function defined, look at the function, function is still there, but it maxes out right there, the range. The range isn't getting higher than that. So y is less than or equal to four? Nice. One, two, three, four. Y is less than or equal to four. There's your range. Very nice.